Hello, here is the only bonnerup, and I'm happy for another video. Don't mind my voice, I have a cold. So, as you have maybe seen by the title, this video is very different. As in then, of the making of that video, in two weeks, I decided to make a Hunter x Hunter background character prop and an update to a cosplay itself. Her name is Suzuku Marusaki, and this is the 2011 version anime I'll be recreating. She has this vacuum cleaner named Blinky, or in the Japanese spoken, Dabachan, and I'll be using just two parts of an old vacuum and the rest is all handmade. Just to tell you beforehand as a disclaimer, this is not a tutorial, as for me and my boyfriend, this is the first time learning experience in making things, and we don't own all the tools that we exactly need for this project. Don't try our actions, especially if you're not experienced with tools as I am. Now, let's begin my journey, and my boyfriend's journey, on making the first prop ever for a convention. I'm very excited to show you my process. So, what I started was with these two pre-cut films. What I did is put the round part in front of it and the flat part to be the back of it. So the back of it can have the addings of the flower thing later. I went up and look how long I exactly want it to be, how big, because I don't want it to be too tiny or too flat. I do exactly where what was standing so I can just cut it out for measurement of the planks later. My next idea, or my boyfriend's, I have no idea which one of us it was, had a perfect idea to put a pole in the middle of it to make it more stabilized. So I had this old pole from another project of cosplay that is at halt at the moment, and I spare my phone storage as this one took so long forever to do it by hand. I don't recommend it. And I cannot cut for shit straight. Now, using a hot glue gun, I will put the pole in the middle of the round phone and make it fit. I'll just gun crazy and use a lot of hot glue as I really don't want it to fail on me. I had to measure the flat one to where the middle exact was. So it didn't let me on any clues. And I'm really surprised and proud that I even did it right because measuring is not my thing. Next is that I do what the instructions tell me to do and unplug the hot glue gun after use. As it so it also told me to let the crew for at least an hour or more before reusing it and I put a tiny cupped ball under it so it won't leak on the work table. Meanwhile, don't forget to eat, as fun work really makes you forget it. So let me tell you, <laughs> as my stupid ADHD head uh, fought to pretend as a heavy barbell, I slid it against something and the pole broke and flew right off. Luckily, it wasn't that heavily damaged, so I repaired it again with the hot glue gun and the piece, and this time I just dug the pole right into the foam, so hopefully it will stay better. And here comes my boyfriend to help me with my projects. But the foam of the back needs to be cut as it's too round on the other side to be resting on the plank. So he just made on how deep it should be and then he cuts it off with a tiny drill. We 
we continued it with also the front road, giving it a bit of spikes to the front back to make it a vest, but also not dangerously that it's dangerous it won't break. My boyfriend and I went already to the hardware store and as they are professionals they got the plank two sides as I measured it and sadly we discovered my measuring wasn't right. I'm not surprised. <laughs> as of course the plank was still too long, we didn't felt like going back to the hardware store again as it was already closed on that day for just also that tiny piece of problem. So, we made it like a tiny bit ourselves and just cut it off ourselves, but of course, without consequences of smelling fire. <laughs> Let's not start a fire. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. So, we grabbed the handsaw only to tell me that my boyfriend used it to cut metal ones with and it's broken anyway. And it doesn't work. So next we decided to return back to the smell of the fire. For safety we grabbed the fire extinguisher to be sure that if the fire starts we are prepared. Why? Oh my god, you got a karate chop? Not with my hands. <laughs> oh I mean I can try. <laughs> no. You want content? No. You want content for your channel? <laughs> you want content? <laughs> Boyfriend slapping plank gone wrong. I'm gonna do it with all caps. Oh shit. Oh my god, no. Ow. <laughs> I told you not to do it! Are you okay? Please don't copy that. Unless you know 100% know what you're doing. We were smart and just grabbed a rubber hammer to sum it up instead. Don't ever do it again. It's not that bad. Oh my god. It doesn't even show on camera. After the plank is perfectly sized, we start to cut from the foam felt edges. My boyfriend made sure to leave some edges in the back, get pointy, so we can press better on the plank. my camera fell, we just hot glued it again and we put the edges on it of the plank so it can rest on it there as well. that my boyfriend wanted to make more steady, get another pole to be cut and a tiny piece and just place it in the middle of where the other poles already have been. As 
Finally, the entire inside base is done. We were moving on to the coverage. My boyfriend said to use plexiglass is very flexible to move around. He measured and he drew to only cut it again with that tiny drill. We don't have the right materials again for it. Now, only to know that plastic and heat don't go well. I actually felt really sick from the smell and had to go outside to the room. My boyfriend then decided to use the backyard to heat the glass up there. Uh, tr with the hairdryer to make it more flex better so we can make it four. It almost took an entire day, so we had to be very patient for it. Actually! Oh my god! Are you seeing the vision I had in my head now? Yes! <laughs> the fate. All we need to do is like fit it around it. But it kind of looks like Bullet Bill. <laughs> it does. I'm not going to say it, but it does. Oopsie. Made the wrong thing. We have to start over again. <laughs> when it was finally perfect, it sadly pounced back a lot still. So we decided to tape it around and harden it, hopefully forming it to the form we wanted. We were afraid a lot of times it would just come loose and it would all fall apart, but it's still worth a shot. Then again we grabbed our hero Miss Guggen, as the Hooglon has been such a lifesaver. I swear to god, it's so worth it for every project you're doing. After we let it all cool, hours later we planned the back of Blinky. It was a tough part since a lot of pictures barely showed any backs of him and sometimes he had different angles for the back. I call it a flower because it has a flowers form so I'm just describing it. One angle has like five petals, the other had like three and the other had four. So we just went with the measurements, decided to keep it as four to keep it even and easier. Since there is no form of the big black blinky that exists anywhere in the pre-cut, we had to cut ourselves and just carve it into the shape we wanted. Also on that, we discovered it's a lot cheaper than the pre-cut foams that we have already placed all together, but that's okay. We used around 4 layers of the squares we already cut it, and we had some special glue that is made for the foam. We stacked it all together, but sadly then to discover we had to wait 24 hours to be fully dry, as then we had 3 days left to complete this entire thing. We were kinda concerned, because in between times we also had to work. I am very grateful. My boyfriend still has this extremely old vacuum cleaner that he never used, so no thrift stores needed for us. We couldn't really find one anyway, so this was the perfect fit. We cut the parts apart that we actually use and we used the tiny cutter again for the trunk of the cleaner to make the sharp edges so it's easy to step the nose right into the middle. Meanwhile he did that, I got the self-hardened clay and started to make the handle for Blinky. I just used a grey silvery handle and used the clay to make a grip on it. Before we did anything else, we just sanded the thing down for the paint later as the gloss may fill the paint. Again, the Miss Glue Gun is very much needed, as he did that to put it around the sharp edges and step it right into the middle. Finally, after 24 hours, the foam is ready to be cut. He drew where he wants to cut or sand the foam to be in shape. almost crying of how this left such a mess and it took us the entire three days to clean it all up. I hope one day we can get it home so we can just do this outside instead. 
Meanwhile, again, we discussed how to make the deep and formed in it with the circle and a bit in the middle to make the flowery form that we see in Blinky. With the red marker, he marked things down that need to be deepened in. Made again with the tiny drill to cut it fully around, very carefully. When it was deepened enough, he used sandpaper to remove the red edges. Once it's all perfectly formed together, we made a plan on how to stick it to the back. He measured all the circles precisely on the back and red mark did it around him. And also on the back. We stick some toothpicks in it again with the hot glue gun and just stab it right in there. Hold it right into place and then hot glue around it. After that, the handle had finally dried. Now it's time to put it on there. We used again a hot dryer for the hair and heat the upper side to make it make sure it sticks well. Next thing my boyfriend did is sadly not recorded as I had to go to work in the weekends. He was free and decided to make the eyes and nails while I was gone. Thank you very much though. By the eyes, he used something to overlap the plexiglass for the coverage. The next thing we're deciding to do is where the wheels should be, as they have to be perfectly aligned. Also what my boyfriend didn't record, what he absolutely needs to think about, is that it has actually wheel, real wheels attached, so I can just drag it around the stone ground. We made sure the fake wheels are high and safe enough that it would soon hit the ground when I drag it. For extra safety, we used some boards to get the big gap to be a little more safer. And now I'm actually crying of happiness that day as it's completely done. Well, the only outside part seems to be really done. So the next thing we're going to continue with is the mouth of the vacuum. Boyfriend tore all the parts and just threw it away. The next thing I tried to do myself is of course the measuring. Boyfriend stood there all the time and of course I really suck at it. Making the mouth out of cardboard throwing around it to make sure it's not big but also not too small and to make it fit enough for the mouth of the vacuum. We used and cut out two parts, one as is just for unclosed and one for the lips. So we had to cut the inside out first. As this is my first try with the paper mache, the tip I would give is to tape it all together first. Also you want to make it form fitted, but also it avoids getting the cardboard wet. We thought the lips were still too thin, so even with the tape, we used old paper to thicken the lips around it and taped it around it again. Next I did the vacuum mouth on the first with the part all around it, no open spots leave left. Again, we didn't really felt like the lips were sticking out, so this time we used tiny pieces of cardboard, placed it on around the lips to make it more pop out, and taped it all around it. 
Now that it's perfect, we start to paper mache. I kind of had to google it since it's my first time trying so. People would recommend wood glue as it works better. At least the glue that is white and not see-through can also be used. First attempt I saw it was a bit too watery. It went everywhere on the mat. I was pretty sure my mat was ruined, but it's okay. I'm also really sure that was not supposed to happen. No worries, just add more glue and thicken it. Just what I did. Sadly, my camera ran out of space for these last few things of this project. I just took pictures of it. Last thing I did is the tiny touches for the mouth. Using a pink cloth to dye it a little more dark pinker than it was. To make the tongue out of cloth. Then using the clay, I've made a lot of teeth and made them white. Then let it set. I started to painting the stick using the outside as a turquoise 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 wow tor turquoise turquoise <laughs> whatever i don't even know anymore uh, <laughs> the outside for the lips i just used pink and i just did it pink in the inside too let that dry and then made the inside black since up of the vacuum it also has like a, t a tiny face on it so I thought it was fun to put giant googly eyes on it that makes it move and make a W of mouth. After it was dry I picked out the teeth that I found the most perfect to be in place and placed them around and just glued them on with super glue. I also left the gap open to get the tongue on the super glue of the mouth. Last but not least Paint the entire vacuum. I drew with a red marker where the cream should be for the vacuum roundish and the rest was just blue with black. And when that's done, the last thing I did was glue down the eyes and finish that painting with black to where he wanted to look. And it's done! Don't worry, I make a separate video of how I fixed my Shizuku cosplay. If you want to check that out, stay tuned for more. Or when it's already here, click the video on my screen or in the description box. More cosplay fixes will be there soon, as my next project is already planned for Halloween. I really hope you enjoyed everything of this, as I really did love doing this. 